What's going on, everybody? This is Young A, and this is the Buzz on A Block. Uh, shout out to Miami Community Radio for having us. Today, for this episode, I have Mato Mary. He's a longtime friend from Broward County, Florida. So I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself here. My name is Mato Miri. I'm from Broward County, Florida. Miramar, to be exact. Yes, sir. Eastside, to be more exact. And I fight for. Captain Max. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mato, tell them a little bit about you, about yourself, why you're here, and uh, a little bit about your audience as well. My audience? Yeah. Your All right. As well. And before I start, I would like to give a commemoration in three ways. One, my boy Young Gay. <laughs> this is my first interview. Yes. I wanted to do an interview for so long and it's finally in effect. Two, I would like to give com uh, commemoration to God. Yahuwah, can we do a quick, um, a quick prayer? Yeah, we can. God, <clears throat> thank you for letting us be here today um, thank you for Young A, the opportunity, the Miami radio podcast spot. Um, thank you for waking us up, giving us our liberty, and I pray that your will be done. Touch the people who's here and the people that's watching via internet. In your son, Ye uh, Yeshua Hamashiach's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Three. Um, you know it's only right. HD yeah. Perry. Yeah. Uh, Those are days. Give the quick rest in pieces to Robert Mitchell the third. Yes, sir. R three. Christian Clark. Yeah. You wanna lie? <laughs> <laughs> you wanna tell a lie? You wanna lie? <laughs> <laughs> and Kayla Hudson. You remember Kayla? Yeah. The baddest dime in the school to be. <laughs> I was afraid. But, okay, we can get the interview vibes on now. You said tell them about me? Yeah, tell them about your, your history, them, them days. It's, it's introduce them and try to get them a warm welcome in that introduction. All right. I'm Mato Miri. I started rapping tentatively around the age of 12. I've gotten my inspiration from yeah. my dad and my little brother. Yeah, for sure. He wanted to be a rapper. My little brother wanted to be a rapper. And when I was on my dad's side of the family, I was, I was kind of bashful <laughs> and my brother was the outgoing one, you know, really animated and things like that. So he'll rap for anyone, everyone, and I'm just there. So he was like the black sheep. Black sheep. Black vibes. Cause my old boy, he'll, <laughs> <laughs> my old boy, he'll put the spotlight on me. And yeah. you know, introverts hate that. So he'll be like, okay, um, Mike, now you go. And I'm like, no. Yeah, he's seen something new. Huh? He seen that. He seen that line. He seen something. New. Maybe it was that. I, I feel like at the time he just snapped on me like, "Dang man, you the big brother. You brought that." Da, 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 da. I hated that. Yeah. So, eventually, I'll say the end of seventh grade. I was with a dude. This when I was really like on the black sheep vibe. I didn't have that much friends. And me and him, we wrote a rap together, but I'm like, dang, I finally felt like I expressed myself. And what so, year was this like? What time was this around? 2012. Okay. So around the end of the school year. It's once I felt, school? huh? It's middle school? Yeah, Perry. Sure. Once I felt like I expressed myself, I just kept going, kept writing. You feel me? The pen and the paper was my friend at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Ski. All right. So, you know a little bit about Mato Mary. Uh, he is a friend of a friend. Now, tell him about that. I'm gonna let you tell him about that. All right. The way. <laughs> <laughs> the way we met, basically. <laughs> the way me and young. <laughs> the way me and young gay met. 
I was making music. I've been making music, but I was finally starting to get in the studio because before it was just like using my mama phone <laughs> and putting videos on YouTube. Unofficial, just trying to, you know, work with what I got. Uh, I'm in this studio vibe. I'm putting stuff out. I'm used to people just like liking the content and going on about their day, but Young Gay just kept on like, like, comment, retweet, you feel me? So I checked out his page. I saw he was making music too, but I hit my, you feel me, my cousin up. Cause my cousin know him. I'm like, hey, cuz. Yeah. Um, you know, fool. <laughs> and she was like, yo. I'm like, he good? <laughs> she was like, yo. So then I hit him up. The rest is history, homie. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, his cousin, uh, JJ, I'll say the name. JJ. Yeah. Love you. He was referring to the East Side when he was talking about um, his days at HD Perry and stuff like that in 2012. But I stayed a little bit on the west side. Uh, I went to HD Perry, and I also went to New Renaissance. So um, I know a little bit of both sides. JJ, she stayed in my uh, neighborhood when I stayed on the, on the west side, uh, like Palm Ave. So you know, we just became close like that uh, for a long time. We beat each other every day. Funny stories, just a lot of memories with his cousin before I even met Martha. So. Um, yeah, in those days, I, I'll, I'll even uh, reflect a little bit back to uh, about 2016, 2017. Um, I was playing ball, I was hooping. So I just started uh, rapping around 2016 and I actually got uh, signed in 2017. Um, yeah, my cousin, her husband had a record label. Yeah. But you know, what? it was all unexpected because I'm like, I'm trying to play ball. But I'm also, you know, in impoverished environments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also, you know, staying in school. And, uh, I graduated. I, I went all the way through school, top 20 in my class. But for now, we're just going to keep it to where uh, it makes sense. So we're talking about 2016 and 17. <laughs> um, my guy. <laughs> I'm listening, bro. <laughs> All right. So, you said you started music because of your little brother? Yeah. All right. Well, um, I would like to further elaborate. Yeah. Because music has kind of always been around me during my upbringing. I think when I was four or five, three, four, five, one of those ages. My old boy, he connected me with um, someone who knows how to play the drums, like I think the bongos. Okay. I'm trying to uh, recollect right now. But yeah, that, that, that made a thought pop to my head. Like for me, when I started music, that was around 2016 and 17, but I always like rap in my head or when I had my Nintendo DS, I would like do voice notes on my right. Nintendo DS, and I'll get in trouble. Like my sisters would tell on me. <laughs> yes, bro. Like, oh, Aaron, I mean, Daddy, Aaron's rapping, and he hear the beat, and he hears the song. I'm like, this is a rap that you never heard before. Right. And your mom was a, exactly yeah. like, I was really <laughs> explicit, but like that's how I started. And <laughs> when I was like 12, 11 as well, like when I stayed with my mom. Yeah. Like when I used to take a shower, like I never used to get out the shower until like I completed a whole freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> my mom used to knock on the door, hey, what you doing in the van? This <laughs> I'm ignoring her, like I'm in meditation, like I'm trying to like finish the song, huh? like I need a yeah. third verse on yeah. this. But I never told nobody. Right. That's the thing, like that's something I always uh, kept to myself and I didn't even think nothing of it. I'm thinking like, well, everybody makes music in their head, right? No, yeah. that's not the truth. So it was like something that inspired me, like wow, like it made me find a little bit more about myself that I didn't know in terms of like self-reflection and recollecting um, different times and experiences in my life. So it honestly helped me get through those times and also carpentalize how to, uh, <laughs> you know, structure and balance uh, the negative and the positive. Yeah. So uh, a little bit about that. 
Yes, sir. Ski. So, your upbringing, like, what made you who you are? Like, what? How, like, this is this the finished product? Like, tell them a little bit about your construction of how you <laughs> became Mato Mary, and a little All bit right. about your appearance and how, how you. All right. Want to be approached? So, I would consider myself. a spiritual, goofy, conscious, hood nerd, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> so, it's like, I'm not a street nigga, I'm not a thug, I'm not a goon, I'm not a gangster because that moderate nerd side is there, you feel me? And I'm not a gook, I'm not a duck, I'm Ex not a- Expound on that when you say you're like your nerd side. Moderate nerd side? Yeah. Um, socially awkward, but really intrigued with attaining knowledge, you feel me? Okay. Like I'd rather stay home and study things to quench your thirst on yeah. acquiring that knowledge. Rather than um, going out to social gatherings. Okay, so you, you know. say you're more introverted. Yeah. Opposed to extra, what, what would you say? I don't want to speak for you. I mean, you got a down pack, introverted, but also I would say I'm not a, a gook, I'm not a duck, a booty, yeah. you fed me, because of that moderate hood side. So omni, omniverted. No. no, introverted, but <laughs> I'm saying like both of those sides are kind of commensurate. Got you. To an extent, you feel me? The okay. hood side and nerd side, but that came from my neighborhood, um, Miramar, and my block specifically, 37th Street by Captain Max. Okay. So how I would describe that neighborhood at the time when I was coming up especially that block, it was like, you have your law-abiding citizens, mm. you have your people with careers, the mm. schools, there's like after-school programs, mm -hmm. and it kind of gives suburb vibes, moderate suburb vibes, but it's not the suburbs. Oh. Because on that block, you also have, you got your criminals, you got the crime, you got the hood niggas, the ratchet dimes, the baby kids, <laughs> you feel me? You know how Perry was. The cops shouldn't be too far. I don't think they was too far. Sometimes they'll be on campus. Yeah. Because it was fights going on, so many fights every going day, on. Every period, lunchtime. So you couldn't go to that school if you couldn't fight at that time. Right. And it's not even a school anymore. Yeah. You shut it down. It's an alternative school now. Right. Yeah. So that would give you moderate vibes of the trenches, but it's not the trenches either. So I think of I think of like suburban areas, like gated communities, real nice areas, like Silver Spoon. The impoverished environments, those type of neighborhoods, I would say no spoon. So the fact that it was kind of a vibe of both, yeah. I'll say plastic spoon. Plastic spoon. You know, we have a utensil. We're using it, but it broke. Oh yeah, that's, it, that's plastic spoon gonna break. It broke at times. <laughs> you about to take me back we, together. You know, we had to figure out, yo, what we gonna do, what we gonna do, until we get another plastic spoon. Yeah. And that was kind of the same with the dwelling, you feel me? Inside the dwelling, you the know. The condition. Yeah, the upbringing. Um, I grew up with my mom, majority okay. of the time. And it wasn't an opulent upbringing, but it wasn't substandard either. Yeah. We weren't wealthy, we weren't poor, we were scraped with ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And the problem that, 
the problem that my mom had with me when I was going through my <laughs> my hood phase, I'll say roughly 15 to 17 years of age and maybe a little bit after that, um, I was illuminating the parts where the spoon was broken. Oh, yeah, just emphasizing the negative. Yeah, making it seem like we were just in the slums and we were like <laughs> piss poor. <laughs> now, it was basically... While in that hood phase, I was, I was speaking and making songs in subtext. Yeah. I was speaking on one side, like, the roaches, you bomb the crib, it's still roaches, bomb it again, what? it's still roaches. Oh my God. You know. They come uh, back 10 times harder. Yeah. <laughs> the cousins that don't want to leave. Oh man. You flip on the light switch, it's not on. So we thugging with the candles. Uh -huh. Turn um, that faucet on, no water. You know, no, um, no cable. Mm -hmm. So you better wake up in the morning and get your cartoons on the basic cable before the afternoon comes. Channel two, PBS Kids. Channel 10, ABC Kids. 17, WLRN. You remember? It's for the basic cable. And I think Channel 11 was Kids WB. Yeah. You feel me? Um, rent man coming. <laughs> and my people was telling me, tell them we not here. That's the part that I was illuminating, but I wasn't, I wasn't speaking on the ups. When, on the landlord, you know, we come and knock on the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, for what, your mom was late on the rent? I'm a JIT, but I don't really remember, but I'm assuming it's around that time. Yeah. But they was telling me to say they're not home. Oh, I got And you. they were home. You feel me? You I was speaking five. to him through the window. <laughs> <laughs> you got that five days grace, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll still come knocking. So I know how that feeling is. You didn't feel the consistency of a... Uh, like, so like balanced yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. What about like elementary? Like what schools and your, like your, what friends did you meet? That elementary, made, yeah, that shaped your experience. Um, R three. <laughs> I met um I met R three in kindergarten, bro. Uh, that was my nigga. Um. Dang, who shaped my experience? I'm not trying to put too many names out there, but I'll say it was more so the neighborhood that oh. really had me like, that really had the impact on me because it was me going to their household and me doing comparisons, you feel me? Um, I'm looking at the game that my friend has and I'm like, dang, I want this game. So I go to my old girl, and <laughs> it's like either when I ask, it's either I'm not going to get the game or I got to wait a long, 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 long time to get the game. And yeah. by the time I get it, a new game comes out, and I'm going to my friend house still. I'm seeing that new game that came out. We both want the game. He asks his peoples. He get it that day or a couple days later. I asked my mama, she gonna say, you just got, I just got you a game, or you fed me. You gotta wait. I gotta wait a long time. So I'm looking at our situation like, like, yo, what's, what's good, man, you fed me? That's what really like had an impact on me. I was looking like, yo, what's up with our situation? Like I just said not too long ago, but ignoring the ups that, you know, my old girl, um, we went to Disney World here and there, Chuck E. Cheese, you feel me? Nigga got clothes, nigga got shoes, nigga ate every day, you feel me? The clothes and shoes probably wasn't, you feel me? Substandard. You feel me? Subs no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it was great, but like, basically, you know, when you were a kid, you trying to keep up with the Joneses. 
So you seeing the other students in the classroom, and it's like, dang, they got this. You know, when we was coming up, I think it was Jordans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan. I had to have the freshest store. What? 13s or 4s. Yeah. So it was one of the songs, what I said, on Hope for the Hood, Mental Stage. Um, we was judged by what we had. Needed Jordans just to walk. I ain't even care for Jordans. I wanted to fit in. That's when people made me feel uncomfortable in my skin. Bro, I never cared about Jordans. I just heard all the other students talking about it, so I wanted it. And when I was asking, I wasn't getting them. That's what had impact on me. Well, how does that influence you now and your decisions and your choices? Um, doing comparisons? Yeah. I don't really do comparisons these days. Mm. I take that back. When I do comparisons, I, I now get motivated like, yo, this dude has this. I need to do the things that he did so um, the thing that I want that he has can be attainable. Oh. You feel me? I don't, I don't mope. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, baby, who is that? Bro, baby, what's over? Bro, baby, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I still, I still use it for like the catchphrase if I'm gonna do the intro of a song sometimes. But yeah, I, I identify with Mato Miri now because Bro, baby, he was. Mm, I'll say approximately 15, 16 when that name was being used and mm. I was still finding myself, you feel me? Yeah. That was around the time that hood phase was going on. Oh. Yeah, man. Hood nigga. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I look now as a mature man, bro, really being able to <laughs> So... <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, I'm sorry. I don't know what was wrong with me at the time. Wow. I apologize for my ignorance. That was ignorant. I'm I'm sorry, mommy. So what motivated you to, I would say, spiritually mature? Um just knowing that there's a heaven, there's a hell. Eventually, we're going to have to vacate from the physical realm the and process. enter another realm for eternity. Mm. And I feel like nothing temporary on this earth is worth eternal punishment. On top of that, Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, died for our sins, a gruesome death, and I, I would say I didn't feel that much love coming up, you feel me? I was often ostracized, you feel me? Still is to this day, but I'm okay with it now. But the fact that he thought so much of me to die for me. It's not just about, oh, I'm going to try to live as good as I can so I don't burn. I rock with that, man. Like, you died for me, bro. People out here don't rock with me. You rock with me that much? That, you feel me? That. Yeah, that's powerful. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah. The way you broke it down and explained it, uh, that, that was, you know, okay. it gave us a clear gist of the switch, <laughs> 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 the shift. You know what I'm saying? Yes, it did. So, oh, uh, how do you get your income? Like, what was, what's your experience on getting money, your relationship with finances and um, <laughs> cu currency in general? 
And shoot, people scared to say they broke. I let them know I'm broke as cluck. Chasing chicken like a cluck. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot. Um, like I said, the upbringing wasn't opulent, nor was it impecunious. Mm -hmm. But... I became a young adult and I realized what working was and then I realized what responsibilities was. What? Tell him. That, that first job, my old boy helped me get my first job at Publix. Scrublix. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> what if Publix is sponsoring this? Come on. Man. I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, I got my first job there. Man, when I say the first day, they got me getting carts. I'm running, running. Wait, wait, in the parking lot? <laughs> in the parking lot getting carts. Room inside. Wow. Room outside. My old boy, he pulled up to the job. He looking at me. He like, Mike, Mike, Mike. <laughs> you got the job already. You got the job. I said, come on, daddy. Don't distract me. I'm working. Work, <laughs> work, 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 work. <laughs> <laughs> I did not do this. <laughs> Bro, it's break time, right? Now I'm inside bagging. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm bagging. It's break time. I asked the boss. I'm like, hey, boss, can I work during break? She said, no, go on break. <laughs> 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 that was the first day, right? Man, that first week I seen that check, I ain't never seen that much money, boy. Like, earned it. You feel me? Wow. So, <laughs> this is when I didn't have no responsibilities yet. I'm like, word? That's all for me? Hiya, hiya. But then, shoot, my old boy. My old boy gave me a taste of the real world. Like, hey, there's this thing called rent, buddy. Yes, sir. <laughs> you feel me? And then... Nigga don't want to be on the bus. I was taking the bus. Like, it took me uh, tentatively an hour to get to the job. Yeah. So, I don't want to keep catching the bus. You feel me? Where are you living at at that time? Uh, the city. Liberty City. All right. And you feel had me? to go to where? Uh, North Miami Beach. Oh, wow. NMB. You feel me? That bus took an hour, approximately. You know what I'm saying? And catching... For that first week, my old boy was like picking me up. But after that, it's yeah. time to catch a lift. Mm -hmm. Find your way. You a man. You know what I'm saying? So you got rent. You got, you know what I'm saying? Uh, food. Food. You're trying to get, trying to get a whip. This, <laughs> that. Fed me. Yeah. That first week was cool. After that. I realized the check just vanished expeditiously. In thin air. You uh, Vicariously. Uh, mm. So I say I gave it about a month. I'm like, yeah, this is buzz. <laughs> no pun intended. Where we at? <laughs> On A block. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so from that month all the way to today, Boy, every job I work, boy, I'm like, yeah, this buzz. Yeah. Just over broke. Yeah. J-O-B. Ooh. Give me some. <laughs> yeah. Just over broke. You feel me? Like, buzz. Every job I work, bro. Yeah. I just want to uh, touch on a little bit about my job experiences. Before I started working any jobs, like, I used to sell candy or I used to sell like watches and flip shoes and stuff like that, or trading, buying trade stuff, yeah. So I was making like maybe $100 a day, I'll make $300 a day, but I'm not seeing that money. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna dive into it. Whoops. Yeah. They were seeing that money. The whoops. Um, before we hop into the whoops though. Um, I apologize, can I chime in one more time? Go ahead. When I was in eighth grade, 
I was selling chips as well. Chips, oh, candy. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, my old boy was the ice cream man, so you I started him? out like taking chips off his truck. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm seeing is profit. Yo, that's crazy. But yeah, but I ain't gonna lie. I'm thinking I was the the El Chapo of chips and candy, <laughs> bro. I got expelled, bro. From where? McNichol. Really? Yeah. Why? Um, they told me one time don't sell. It was my math teacher. So, from my recollect, I was selling chips and candy. <laughs> I was selling chips and candy. I was told I can't do that. Well, you was out loud with it, like you had the bag and all, and everything, or you just was not like, at first. I was slip. low. I was low key at okay. first. Okay. Um. I know once it gets like bigger, you gonna have to like. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. No, I ain't gonna lie. I think it was one of the times I came in with like some type of duffel bag. Yeah, it, <laughs> it gets serious, bro. Like, hey, yes. you feel me? Cause in middle school, you know, niggas is selling something else. You feel me? I'm like, shoot. Yeah. I'm trying to get some shoes. I'm trying to get some. You know what I'm saying? What? So I'm trying to like expedite the process. You feel me? In, in a harmless way. You heard? You, you like, dig? Yeah. So I speed up the process. She she tell on me. But then after she tell on me, I see she kind of like indulging in, you feel me? <laughs> that franchise too, that business. Like selling snacks and whatnot. Um, then I get caught a second time by one of her snoopers. You wow. feel me? And I think after that, it was a wrap for me. Nigga went from McNichol to Andover, but when I went to Andover, bro, I did no work. I wrote raps, and I sold. I sold snacks, and I changed my personality. That's it? At Andover? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, to expel you, I mean, I got called a couple times, but, you know, I was just quiet with it. And it was probably just take your bag for the whole day and give it back to you. Yeah, from what, I, from what I remember, it was expulsion. From what I remember, yeah. It's rough. Like, wow. Life is rough. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, um, yeah, just a little bit about jobs. Like, I remember my experience applying to so many jobs because, you know, that's when I started living with my, my dad solely. And I was, like, 16. I'm like, yay, I'm 16 now on a job. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to apply to Publix. And back then, I was on Palm Map, so I could stay across from Publix, Checkers, Golden Crust, uh, a lot of places with a lot of opportunity over there, a Chinese place, a Subway on, on, the, on the back end, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm 16, I'm going to apply to Publix, I want to push carts. You know, and I was in lifelong <laughs> change. <laughs> Boy, it did not go that way. I went in there to apply, oh, you got to apply on the kiosk. Yeah, the kiosk, <laughs> the kiosk. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. What? <laughs> like, I'm applying, and I'm just yeah. like, I don't really know what to put on the application. I'm just like trying to just get through it. I'm like, oh my god, I've been standing for like 40 minutes. Yeah. So like, I get through it, and I I didn't know you had to come back to check the application. I thought they just kind of like come yeah. to you. I was wrong. My knowledge on that was not great. So I'm talking to my older sister about it. She's like, no, Aaron, you got to go back and talk to them people, da, da, da. I'm like, talk? I'm an introvert. <laughs> yeah, my old boy did the same thing. They not going to call you. You need the job. I'm like, okay, okay all right. <laughs> you know, I, was at the, I thought it was like school. Like, right. So I went back. I spoke to them. They said, oh, okay, come back or apply again. And I'm like, I told my sister, they told me to come back, apply again. Oh, Aaron, you didn't get the job, da, da, da. <laughs> You gotta uh, apply to some other ones. You need help? You need a resume? I'm like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now when I found out what a resume was, I'm telling you, I'm on my computer. Checkers, McDonald's, Burger King. I'm just applying, applying, applying. Um, Win Dixie. Like, I applied to like 36 or 40 jobs. Didn't get one. Yes. What? I can't no, that's not even a cap number. Like, that is a real number. Dang. Well, I cried. You know how many days I cried? I'm like, Get a job with this 
Because I had two pairs of pants, two pairs of khakis. And then it was high school, I had like three pairs of outfits. So I like remix. So I had two pairs of shoes. Dog. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> hey, 11th and 12th grade. I went to I went to school with the clothes I had ninth and tenth grade. Wow. I'm like, hey, bro. Wow. Dang, bro. I mean, at that time, I started working like eleventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. I was a I was a nurse. Well, not really a nurse, but a nurse aide, like a yeah. CNA. Yeah. So I started making good money, and that's what I used to. Uh, pushed my career in a sense at that time because I was like a year or two after I got signed yeah. in 2017. So I'm just I'm in the studio like every week now and stuff like that. But I'm I'm cleaning poop every day. Like <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if it gets lower than that. But <laughs> you said I don't know if it gets lower than that. <laughs> Bottom of the totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just shoot it right here. <laughs> no, they, they, they couldn't even talk. And then some oh, of them, the ones that could talk, because they're carthoplegic, so they're, they're like paralyzed from their, or their whole body. Yeah. So um, the ones who could talk or move like the top part of their body, like they would just talk, say, oh, oh, why are you covering your nose? <laughs> so, like they would like dig and like get the, get yeah. the poop. And sometimes like, yeah, them, them patients was bad. Like that wasn't an easy job. Yo. There was some nice ones, but I mean. I commend you, sir. Yeah, I mean, that's why I went so hard on my music. Cause I'm like, if I'm gonna do all this to get money, it's gonna have to go somewhere. Right. Like, I can't just be just over broke. Right. So, I mean, I would rather be just over broke with songs, with food in, in the house so I could cook. I ain't eating now. I don't like, I'm not a social person. Right, bro. Bro. Every job I worked was motivation for me to make something shake when I did want to be a superstar. Oh, okay. You feel me? That was my motivation. Like, just waking up and knowing I have to go here again for hours and get that small money. Just like JIT days, comparing myself to other students. Yeah. Now I'm comparing myself to uh, my associates and my peers. You feel me? Like the ones who doing they want to to get their bread. Yes, sir. Pros and cons um, on both on both sides. Yeah. But on this side, as a law-abiding citizen, I'm looking at their pros. Like, dang, they got chicken, man. They chicken is clucking. You yeah. feel me? In not so honorable ways, but yeah, yeah, I'll say that. So, you know, I'm the credit man, credit man. Yeah, that's me. That is you. How has credit helped you, or how have I increased your knowledge on credit uh, in that aspect in general? Hi, yeah. So, you helped me with my credit. You disputed some letters. You feel me? And you was getting certain loans knocked off. An account. Yeah. And my score started increasing. So we hit the lot and we was trying to get a vehicle. Yeah, the dealership. You know, I was in dire need of a vehicle at the time. Oh yeah, from Miami. My chicken isn't clucking at the time, but since my credit score increased, thanks to this guy, yes, Sarsky, I was able to get me a whip, you feel me, and just pay it off in time, which also increases the credit score. Yes, sir. Yeah. Unfortunately, he does not have that car anymore. He, was, he fell victim to Kia Boys. Kia Boys. Yeah. Oh, Kia Boys. <laughs> But now we're working to uh, get that loan uh, in good standing so that he has the positive equity reporting on his, on his report. Yeah. So that's just a little, bit, a little bit about what I do. 
uh, credit universally can make or break you. And if he didn't have the uh, capital on hand to, you know, purchase a vehicle, what was he going to do? The only alternative was, you know, you know, to make that sacrifice and be patient, and build his credit. And I'm glad he did. And yeah. so I appreciate you, my guy. <laughs> no pressure, homie. Yes, sir. You know that. So I did want to hop into the diet, like spiritually since, would you say, are you familiar with like spiritual awakenings and stuff of that nature? Um, kind of. I've heard about them. If you like can elaborate just a little bit, I think I'll be able to, you feel me, dive into the conversation. Yeah, I'm basically saying like, see how you were Briar Baby, yeah. now you rebirth into Mato <laughs> Mary. <laughs> um, you do you feel like a your your diet has changed from back then till now? And what uh, uh, changes have you made to have a supplemental diet uh, in terms of your mental, physical, spiritual, and uh, physical? Indubitably, it changed. Indubitably, <laughs> yeah, yo. So basically from a child to, I'll say, roughly 23, <laughs> I wasn't health conscious, you feel me? Wow. Like, if I wanted a hot sausage, pause, uh, <laughs> pickled eggs, hot fries, you feel oh, me? Oh, boy got on his truck. Yeah, can candy lady type food. Yeah. I'm not trying to mess Pickles. up your business, Pops. Pops know I love them, you feel me? But I'm saying though, like, as a jit, whatever I wanted to eat, you feel me, I get that. Like, the standard American diet, if that makes sense, Pop-Tarts, this and that, you feel me? Uh, hot dogs, noodles, and stuff like that. So from that time, I was just throwing anything in my body. Now, when my old girl, she cooks dinner, it's vegetables there and things like that, but I say now I'm way more health conscious. When I came back from Georgia after I graduated and I came back down. Okay, you graduated my, in what, what year? 2017. All right. When I came back down and I moved with my old boy in Miami, I was feeding myself, mm -hmm. you feel me? Um, and I was feeding myself what my pockets were saying, feed me, you feel me? So that was noodles, that was peanut butter, jelly, cereal, Lunchables, uh, faux for faux, things like that. And that's not nutritious at all. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm not, I'm not like as healthy as I want to be. Like, you see my, my hair, you feel me? The corners, the crowns, it's like gone. But if you have a little bit of hair growing in that area, you could revive it. You feel me? Blood circulation and the right nutrients. But I noticed once I just kept eating it, kept eating it, kept eating it, I was trying to do the math. It's not genetics. My mama's side not bald, my daddy's side not bald. Both sides have hair. You feel me? So what else could it be? My diet, you feel me? That was, well, still is the the detriment of me not putting the right food in my body. We can heal ourselves through what we ingest. We don't need all these pills and things like that, you feel me? A lot of the food be cancerous, you feel me? Elaborate on that. Um, For one, swine, pork, it's, it's cancerous. You can get cancer. Um, specifically with this, you feel me? Young dudes who, whose hairline may be receding or the crowns is messing up or whatever. Um, I'll say spinach, it has almost everything you need. You feel me? And Okay, so now we're talking about like calcium and estrogen, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So make sure that you have all the right nutrients, yeah. and enzymes, mm -hmm. and healthy blood flow circulation. I think spinach does 
a minuscule of okay. the blood the blood flow, but watermelon, that's gonna get the blood oh, flowing okay, for okay. real. So yeah. anything in specific that that is, that you favor that is your your like go to food? Yeah, or fruit vegetable. Fruit vegetable. Yeah. Me and my <clears throat> whoop, we was both sick in December, and a couple months ago, and. Bro, I'm a goofy dude, you feel me? So, like, you're bound to laugh around me, <laughs> I believe. So, me and her, we just crack jokes all day. But at this time, we was filled with mucus. Oh. And you know that you know that, that cough that hurts? Oh, man, yeah. Bro, we were still <laughs> cracking jokes and laughing and hurting ourselves. Oh, man. But we said, yo, we said, yo, um, from this day forward, Immunity boosters, man. We need good stuff in our system so we don't be sick no more. Go through this again. So from December to today, I've been busting down uh, citrus, cuties, oranges, majority of the week. I ain't been sick since December. Yeah. And when you say uh, immunity boost, you know, like B12, kombucha. Um, and that's like some of them. I'm really trying to get it from out the food. Oh, okay. So like the actual, the actual orange, um, apples, like the actual fruits and, and vegetables. You feel me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Bob Marley said, "Herbs yeah. to heal the nation." Yeah. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to moderate, you know, the stuff that isn't good for us, like. Eggs, it raises the cholesterol, but you feel me? If you if you eat certain things in moderation and you know how to flush out your system, you feel me? And you ingest majority of good things, you vibe Yeah, you supplements your body needs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you say your diet would affect your everyday thinking in terms of studying, music. How does it shape that? Um... Hmm. I know you said you said your whoop, she was sick, so you was able to yeah. help her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that girl. But hmm. I'm on self improvement. Yeah. And mentally, I would say I'm trying to get more in the books. Yeah, okay. More in the books. Um, <clears throat> coming up, I think my old girl told me she tried to have me get on this reading vibe, but I just wasn't going. Mm-hmm. But now I'm trying to play catch up. So I got to start with what I like, and I suggest people do that. Don't get no novel that you're not interested in to <laughs> start to get fake deep. You feel me? Like, start where you are with what you have. So right now I'm on... I don't even remember the name of the book, but it's a hood book, a hood story. Mm. You feel me? And that's slowly expanding my vocabulary. I'm I'm learning another language at the moment. I'm trying Duolingo. to Duolingo. Yeah, Duolingo. <laughs> I'm trying to learn Creole because I'm Haitian, but my peoples ain't speaking with me coming up. Yeah, bit de Creole. <laughs> I'm not Haitian, by the way. I'm learning. He's supposed to be teaching me, but uh, he's a bad teacher. Oh, uh, you a bon professor? A little bit. Ah, how you, <laughs> you know what that meant? Ah. I'm a good teacher. Yes, sir. Ski. Dang, how did I do that? I'm trying to. <laughs> you just try to make me look bad on camera. It's okay. Nah. This is how it goes for the black sheep. That's how they treat Doing us. My white <laughs> Yeah, so that, um, I'm trying to study that. Basically things where I feel like a man should know and a father should know because eventually I do want to have a wife and children. Yeah, I feel like at my age I'm behind based on the upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my old girl majority of the time and I'll be with my old boy like, every other weekend, but even being over there growing up, 
I don't remember learning anything or learning too much. It's when I came back down, that's when it's like, okay, now it's a mixture of he's giving me lectures and what he's saying, okay, that, I already knew that. Okay, that, I knew that too, but I needed to hear it again. It needed to be refreshed in my mind. Yeah. Okay, that, I never knew that. You just put me on peasy. On peasy, on point. You just taught me something. You feel me? You put me on peasy. So, but yeah, coming up, nah, bro. Oh, girl. So certain things as a man, certain things um, from the culture, my ethnicity. Yeah. So you didn't have the typical like nuclear family. You didn't have the, <laughs> the structure of the backbone. Like it was more so like you just had to get by. Yeah. 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 I had I had a dude in the crib, but there was a dude in the crib, but he wasn't teaching me how to be a man either. Oh, when you were staying with your, with your mom. Yeah. Wow. That's how Fair it goes. Me. Yeah, since we speaking on that, um, what is your experience with like whoops, well, women in general? Can I put them on PZ? Go ahead and do whatever you want. Why? All right. So, I like to, you know, make up words. You feel me? Couple uh, whoops in the building. Slay for the spinning. See couple a couple watching. Touching. Don't know how they feeling. A couple and trying to poly. Mato playing tennis. tennis. Nice Last man. place is where the nice guys tennis. tend to finish. So I got a heart, but I ain't got, got no feelings. feelings. They put my heart on ice. Got me ice, ice grilling. grilling. But I'm half hero. And I'm half, half villain. villain. Niggas chasing dimes. I, I could say, say you, you tripping. tripping. Used to be me. I, I digress. <laughs> 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 I digress. So... Whoops is, from my standpoint, it would be a woman, but to further elaborate, a whoop is a friend of the opposite sex with or without benefits. <laughs> if you care to expound what type of whoop that whoop is to you, you can, but you can also be confidential with it. So if I got a whoop here, a whoop here, this one, we're strictly platonic, that's my whoop. This one, we may be doing a little hi on the side, that's my whoop. But a girlfriend is not a whoop, a fiance is not a whoop, a wife is not a whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Mato. But you, <laughs> what like, you were saying though? Okay, thank you for the explanation, by the way. For sure, Brody. I'm pretty sure they needed that uh, prior knowledge. A lot of people was getting it misconstrued. I feel you. So, I would say like, growing up or even now, like, what's your experience with whoops and how did that shape you? Let <laughs> me finish. To the musician you are, the person you are today, because you know, I, I, it's young age. I, I, I got to do it. I have. To. I'm an open book, so. All right, I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, growing <laughs> up, whoops, bro. I was a booty, bro. I wasn't getting no love from the whoops, bro. Yo, elementary school, bro. I said I was a jit jit. I was writing notes. Fabby. I, I, I forgot what I used to write, but I do remember something I said. And I'm sorry for staring, but you're just so beautiful. Booty. Oh, wow. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, what would you say? Like, that's not the best approach, you feel, for yeah, you? Yeah, bro. No, bro. If I could go, it's different niggas, you feel me? Coming up, I say, before getting that job, the whole school experience, I was Michael. I was Michael. Oh. Michael. Elementary? Like, the whole school, elementary, middle, high school. Oh, okay, okay. I was Michael. Feel me? Gook. Out, outside of school, when I started working, Mike slash Mikey. 
You feel me? Oh. It was like gook slash like getting it together, starting to peep things, know how to move and stuff like that. Slowly but surely. Mm. And then that nigga Mato, man, listen, listen. It wasn't off rip, but after a while, that boy, yeah. But um, back to your question, the upbringing with the whoops, bro, I ain't, I ain't know how to be smooth with them. I was terrified to talk to the ones that I found attractive. Yeah. Um, well, you say that, would you say that comes from overthinking? Because I know you uh, touched on that majority, you live with your mom. Yeah, overthinking. Okay. And like I said, I ain't have no nigga, I ain't have no nigga teaching me, yo, this how you move with the dimes. I ain't have no nigga getting me out my comfort zone. You oh. feel me? Like, I feel like if I was a jit and it was a dime I like and there was a, a older nigga under me schooling me, like, yo, this what you do? Or that nigga made me talk to that dime, I would have broke out of that in elementary. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I just had to learn that and become this version of me on my own, bro. Yeah. You feel me? But, yeah, that upbringing, dog, that was with the whoops. It was bad. I ain't gonna lie, 10th grade. <laughs> 10th grade, no, not 10th grade, ninth grade. Oh, okay, freshman year. Yeah. yeah. It was one whoop that did give me the time of day. <laughs> Yo, she was in my math class. Yo, she <laughs> know who she is. Brown, she know who she is. <laughs> long hair, brown skin. <laughs> Yo, J. Cole, please don't sue. But, no. Um, she was in my math class. <laughs> I let her know through Facebook message. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Facebook, yeah. Through That's message right. like, yo, I like you. Woo, woo, woo. You feel me? And I ain't going to lie. That was one whoop that I could remember that was, I ain't going to say she liked me or she didn't like me. She tried. You feel me? She was approaching me. It was one time we in class. You got the left side of the classroom. This one, you inside the class. Now, the board is facing this way. You yeah. got the left side of the classroom, the middle, and the right side. I'm in the middle, sitting sideways. So you sitting like this here. Yeah. I didn't under, so let's say the left is back here. Yeah. I didn't understand the work. So nine out of 10, I wasn't doing the work. I was writing a rap. I'm just writing, writing, writing. Keep in mind, I put on PZ now. That dime, that dime walked up and stood over me like she was catching a body. <laughs> that girl walked up. Hi, Michael. <laughs> you know what I did? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I ain't even look up. I ain't even look up, bro. That's crazy. Hi, Michael. Hi. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible, bro. Well, you had a vision. You knew. Huh? I said you knew. You had a vision. You was it, locked in. No, I was <laughs> I'm not even finna. <laughs> ain't no scapegoat for this situation. <laughs> I was spooked, bro. Bro. Beauty was intimidating. Oh. Really intimidating, and I was over analytical. You feel me? You gave too much. What you mean by that? Over analytical, like, um, let me think. Let me try to go back to that, um, <laughs> that troubling time. <laughs> Low self esteem, gosh. Um, Bro, just not feeling good enough. Like, you're not good enough for this female. Like, she looks too good. Why would she want to talk to you? <laughs> you don't have no money. You don't have no fresh clothes. You feel me? Like, you ain't got the best shoes. Like, who is you? Like that. Like that. Feeling inadequate. Feel me? So, that's what that was. That was crazy. 
I'll go, I'll go vibe with the dimes who female girls, the whoops, <laughs> who I guess their their looks didn't intimidate me. Those the ones that I was like, all right, fed me, but them not the ones I really, really wanted to vibe with. I wanted the ones who I found attractive, but I was too intimidated, bro. I was, I was scared, bro. Yeah. I mean, but now, what, you say lack of experience was what made you do that? So now you got more experience, right? Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> Indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, tell us a little bit about your favorite musicians and your inspirations growing up, whether it be a public figure, a notorious figure, or even a music artist, anybody. Um. Athlete. The musicians I could give. J. Cole. <laughs> it's a given. <laughs> Might delete later. <laughs> We're going crazy on that bit, huh? Bumping it. Hide your, hide your wild. Hide your, hide your <laughs> Walking one deep, I keep forgetting I'm my throat. <laughs> J. Cole. Um, Keith Wallace, FKA, Full Clip. Okay. Ice Billion Bird. Yeah. Lil Dread. Shout out Dread. And D1. Now. For sure, you are. I have been, <clears throat> I have been, you know, changing the trajectory as far as genre. I've been switching over to R&B. You feel me? <laughs> Mary J. Blige, she been having me in a chokehold. <laughs> That's your inspiration? I mean, no, nah, I was still talking about musicians, but ins oh, okay. inspiration, um, who inspires me? Jonathan Dupaton. Wow. Rich and Finesse? Yeah. No, 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 no Rich and Unemployed. Rich and Unemployed. Yeah. Just, you feel me? His mindset. I don't agree with everything, but I <laughs> but you know, I pick different, you know, different sectors and I run with it. I feel like if I was looking at dudes like hmm, Jonathan Dupaton, Andrew Tate, Steph is cold. Yeah. The red pill, blue pill. Not picking up everything that they hauling about, but mm -hmm. certain parts. High value, man. And running with that, I would have been way better. I feel like not just with whoops in school, but everything. Like my self-esteem probably would have been had a job. Oh, okay. Um, just really not wasting time, bro. Like I would have mm -hmm. tapped in more. I would have been more tapped into my potential instead of just getting by or feeling like um, I'm inadequate. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I feel like I would have been way further. Right now, I feel like I'm playing catch up, but it's all good. We try not to cry over spilt milk. Yeah, I mean. Saying that, that 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 makes a lot of sense. You said like you would have had a job moving further ahead, just your experience in general. Wow. So w were you done with the favorite musicians? Because I know you said Mary J. Blige. How did how did like that's a little what, off the wall. You said what the what? You said Mary J. Blige was like one of your favorite musicians. Oh no 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 no. Um, she's not my favorite. Um, the favorite was the five that I named. But I'm saying, like, she just been having me in a chokehold lately, so she might could get on that list. I ain't going to lie. 
She might could. <laughs> if you look in my life and see what I see, if you look into my life. It's like a go-to. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Nandi's baby barely made it. <laughs> <laughs> Nandi nine. Nine. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Ski. I'm two thousand, so. I still love you, boy. You <laughs> <laughs> I still love you, boy. Oh, <laughs> oh God. God. I was trying to, I was trying to come on my belly. Mm-hmm. January 9th. I was, I was trying in December. It's all good. I tried, I tried, I, could, I tried to join you, cuz. Bro, me and my, me and my whoop, we be, we be going at it all the time, cause she's an early 90s baby. Mm. And she be telling me, you're not a 90s baby. I'm like, so I never breathed 90s air like you? She's like, you did? I'm like, in the discussion, like what we still talking about? So then she'll try to bring up songs. <laughs> When I get some of the songs down pack, oh, how many times you had to listen to that over and over? I'm like, all right, all right, this is what we're doing. All right, <laughs> no, nope. no winning with you. I don't want to talk. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to talk. Oh, good. Yeah, I love that girl. All right, so I want to touch on like your experience so far with the uh, with the music industry. How long have you been doing music in terms of like, would you say, in a serious manner or in a way that you were pursuing something? Um, I'm 24 right now. I've been doing music seriously since 12 years of age. Wow. The studios and stuff like that? Um, studios every once in a blue moon. It At was. 12? Mm, no, nah, as I got older, it was oh. like, as I got older, I'll have like little, really minute studio experiences. Overall, it was just my mama phone mm. and a big notebook. <laughs> You're going to see me on YouTube flipping the notebook and reading the lyrics. <laughs> but I'm an advocate of use what you got. Whatever you have to get to where you're trying to go is never too small. You utilize that to the best of your ability. And that's what I was doing. So, um, yeah, 12 years of age, you feel me? I've had a lot of broken promises, Mm. you feel me? I feel like I've been doing this for a while. And I know if I would have done it how I know it was supposed to be done for the 12 years instead of how I was doing it, which is, you know, drop a song, drop a song, drop a song, drop a song. Even though people do blow like that, some people do blow like that. Oh, okay. You feel me? They drop some songs and over time it goes viral. I wasn't putting, I wasn't really putting chicken behind myself. You know it takes promo. You feel me? But um, at the same time, I was kind of spooked. You feel me? One, not having enough money. Two, when you do try to use the money to push yourself, niggas buck. You got niggas bucking out you. You feel me? That's part of the music industry. Oh, like like uh, people stealing from you? Yeah. Stuff like that? Yeah. So you had those experiences before? Yeah. Wow. Elaborate on that. Um, so, damn, I wish I could find the um the picture. I doubt that I'll be able to find it right now. If I do find it, it'll take a while. But Emmanuel Double XL, he uh. his foot was in the door with Double XL. I forgot what he was. I'll show you later. But um, he basically inboxed me saying like he DM'd me and he was like, yo, um. I like your music, woo, woo, woo. I could, I could get you, uh, mm-hmm. I could get you a page. On the, on the Devil XL cover? Yeah. Okay. Not really the cover, but like somewhere in the magazine. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, bet. I think he asked me to send him a song. I sent him a song and he made it seem like he was rocking. So it was like, 
after I pay, he's like, oh, you got to pay this too. You got to pay this too. You got to pay. I'm like, yo, what's the total, bro? What's the total? Feel me? Long story short, I'm cutting chicken. You feel me? But I didn't end up on double XL. So you got that. I'm thinking after struggling, working these jobs that I hate, it was an event. I go to Gwen Cherry Park. Okay. And who was all supposed to perform? Bro, a lot of people out there. Lil Dread out there. Uh, Billy Blue out there. Trick Daddy. Mike Smith, you feel me? Baby Soldier was supposed to be out there, but I don't know what happened. But I'm out there. Olo. And I got a notebook and a pencil. It's a little story, too, so bear with me. All right. Um, I got a notebook and a pencil. I'm just writing the link to my SoundCloud. Mato Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing the link to my SoundCloud and just ripping it out the notebook and giving it to everyone who I deem as prominent. Wow. You feel me? So when I see my people, I think I give it to them. I give it to Trick. I give it to... I jump the gate. <laughs> I jump the security gate. Wait, what? To get in? Yeah, bro, like to get in the VIP section. Oh. I look. I'm looking. I'm thinking, okay, ain't no security paying attention. Man, self-servient. <laughs> self-servient. I jump the gate. As soon as my feet hit the VIP flow, hey, I'm like, I jump back. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, you can't do that. I'm like, uh, I apologize. Um, I have these papers. I was just trying to give it to Dredd and his entourage. Would you? So boom, I do that. I go all the way around because I know Dredd and them boys finna get out get off stage or whatever. I give it to him just in case he didn't. Security didn't. Um, and I see like strong arm. Okay. Just the people that Baby Soldier and I think Flo Rider signed to. Okay. I give them the, uh, <laughs> I give them those little papers. I'm like, yo, I make music. And they were like, your music good? And I'm like, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think so. I would like to think so. So <laughs> they take it, and I'm at work, bro. I'm at Publix. I'm getting carts. I don't even remember if they said they was finna call me, but I get a call. I pick it up. I'm in front of the store. I'm on an interview with, I think, Taylor, like one of the head honchos. From uh, Strong Arm? From Strong Arm. Oh, okay. IM, IMG, you feel me? Oh. One of them things. I think that's what it's called. But um, I'm on the phone. They say they live and they fixing to play one of my one of my songs. I go down the street. Down the street. Because if they holler about signing or whatever, I'm taking off this apron right now. Indubitably. <laughs> Indubitably. <laughs> so they play the song that's sleepwalking. Okay. That's one of the ones you shared. Instead of selling dope, I'd rather sell a mixtape. Oh. Yeah. So they set up a time to go out there and I talk to her. I go out there yeah. in a lift because I don't have a car. <laughs> I go talk to her. Um, the vibes was not welcoming. Niggas was looking like, I'm like, uh, I'm looking for Taylor. <laughs> 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 so I get in there, we talking, you feel me? Basically, what, what, I'm, um, what I'm hearing is that like, you feel me? It's a chance for me to get signed and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, we out the hood, yeah. We out the hood, yeah. Uh, uh, feel me? Yeah. 
<laughs> what, what year was this? I forgot, bro. Uh, I think 20, 2018, 2019. Oh, so after you graduated. Not right after, but somewhere in the middle of that timing, because I didn't have locks yet. Oh. I didn't even have the little, the little ones yet. Wow. But it's when I've been working for a while, because remember I said that first time working, like the first couple of weeks or first month or whatever, it was great. This is when I was tired of working, so it had to be somewhere between 2018 and 2019. Yeah, we probably never locked it in like, like that, like that, yeah. Right. Probably a little bit before, huh? Yeah. So... Um, you feel me? I got her number, and after vacating the premises, I'm calling. I'm like, yo, what we, what we gonna do? She's like, oh, I'm gonna let you know, or I'm gonna call you back, or something like that. Mm -hmm. That next week, yo, what we doing? I'm gonna let you know, I'm gonna call you back. I think after that second or third time, I don't like to feel like a nuisance, you mm -hmm. feel me? So... We still in the hood. And when I was working at the job, bro, when I was working at Scrubli Publix, <laughs> <laughs> when I was working at Publix, bro, it was a bad whoop at the job. And I just couldn't seem to get her. Mm. <laughs> I tried to use the fact that I was getting sad. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Bro, pause. I tried to use the fact that I was getting signed to pull up, bruh. What she said? Bro, how's the deal going? Oh, wow. Uh, Man, I forgot what I said, but yeah, I'm pretty sure she knew two plus two was four. Like, I'm still here. Like, I'm still clocking in, you feel me? Wow. That was bad. So that was your experience, right? You got any more experiences? Like, oh, my bad. Um, Cause I'm thinking you want to go to the next topic or whatever. Like, oh, we vibing. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> he said, yeah. So you had you had that the signing. You had double XL. You had. <laughs> Growing up with my stepdaddy. Oh. That boy big in the Haitian community. Okay. Secretoire. Secretoire. Saint Lun. DJ. Yeah. yeah. You know him? Yeah. Yeah, that was my, you fed me, my stepdaddy. And I'm thinking, I'm interested in music. That boy been on music since I was a jit. He was there since I was a jit. Fed me. Practically a baby. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking that would have been a way for us to bond. You feel me? In my, how old I was? In my 13, 13, 14 year old mind, you feel me? Yeah, I think 13, 14. I'm like, yo, let's work, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Let's work. I'm thinking that would have been a father son type thing. Yo, let's work. Yeah. I'm asking him. He do the same thing Taylor did. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Get back to his motion. That next week, yo, come on, come on. I could hear he's in like some big event, probably performing. He like, I got you. I got you. I don't want to be a nuisance. I stopped calling. You feel me? Wow. Um, he did get me in the studio once, and I did a song, but seeing the following that he had, and like, you're not helping me push the song or anything. It's not what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, just like with me, with my, uh, with my label. Yeah, so the fact that it's not what I thought it was gonna be, I just, I just, you feel me, let it go. And keep in mind, these things are really taking a toll on me as an artist, you feel me? Because for one, I'm not sounding like everybody else. So I'm like, mm -hmm. dang. 
I'm already I'm already ostracized in the regular world. Right. Now in music too. I thought I would have <laughs> had some type of motion here, you feel me? Um double you'd be A accepted. Huh? You thought you would be accepted somewhat creatively. A little more than the regular world. Like, okay, the students at school, they not really rocking, you feel me? I ain't got too many friends in school, but maybe in the music world, because I think I sound good, I think I'm talented in this field, you feel me? Yeah. Double XL, Buck, uh, Taylor, not signed. <laughs> Saint Clon, Second Trois. Nothing, you feel me? So those are your attempts of trying to collab um those were some attempts i have i have more but <laughs> I, I digress you feel me i don't want to mutt i feel you but yeah now i don't like i said i know if i would have done it the way i know now it should have been done mm -hmm. you feel me i would be further but now it's like i don't really care to be a superstar no more like i'm really enjoying solitude and i know the superstar life would just oppose that in a major way yeah on the go constantly requiring your attention yeah your undivided attention at that yeah we prefer <laughs> kicking kicking yeah. back family you yeah. know being there sharing your experiences your expertise your advice yeah just being like wholesome right yeah grounding yourself that's what you yeah. prefer that's what i'm hearing i'm gonna still right. i'm gonna still make music though because this is how i express myself i think i was forced into being an introvert to an extent so i don't feel comfortable like confiding in people like venting to people you feel me so I'm going to still make music because I love it. And it could bring some chicken. Yeah. <laughs> it could bring some chicken. I see, um, I forgot her name, but she's fighting for the musicians to get a penny per stream instead of point, 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 zero, 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 point, zero, zero, point, zero, one percent of a penny. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to still do music, but not to blow. If I blow, I blow. If I don't. I don't care. Baby, yeah. That's real. You still have a lot of life to left to live. So that brings me to uh, my other topic. What um, what is your three to five year plan? What would you say is that from now? <laughs> 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 Um, all right. You tell her, <laughs> all right, on the microphone. <laughs> Yo. All right, we got to get back to it. Three to, <laughs> three to five year plan. Honestly, bro, I've made so many plans from 18 to now that didn't go as planned. Um. That, that put me in an anxious state of mind. Like, just knowing I can't stay with my peoples forever. You feel me? I'm getting older and time is not waiting on me, so I need to do something. You so you'll be a quarter of a century this year, 25. Clap it up. Clap it up. Old. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like. From now till 30, like, what, what are some. Things that you want to touch on. I know you don't want to uh, expose all your uh, evil schemes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just joking. Shoot. Damn, bro. I really don't. I'm just trying to fill myself up with knowledge right now and hope that knowledge that I'm attaining can um, bring some revenue. Okay. You Anything in specific? No. Nah. No. Be because the things that I've been trying to submerge myself into that didn't bring no chicken, I was just like, 
You feel me? Dang, like, am I not allowed to have money, God? Like, what's <laughs> going on? You feel me? So, and I noticed, like, the anxiety came from looking that far, that far down, like three years, five years. But when I, when I make a list of what to do for these 24 hours mm. and I excel in that, then I do that the next day, then I do that every week, which turns into a month, which turns into a year, you feel me? God be talking to me and showing me signs like, this is what I want you to do, you feel me? Probably six months down the road, but when I'm right here thinking about that six month, that's when I get a headache, being over analytical. Mm. I just do it one day at a time, and God be showing me as I, as I go, like, yo, do this now, do that now. That works better for me, so I don't know where I'm finna be in five years. I just hope I'm alive healthy and free that's real yep that's real so like having a plan set out doesn't work for you mm. no yeah i mean i can say i could relate to a degree i mean when i feel like i work myself tirelessly or i'm just over my work i just feel like uh, i need a mental break Mentalizing too much, like I'm trying to put too much into one. Just keeping that balance and just going off like that, that sign, but also staying structured, having a list for that day or that week, that works way better, you know. Yeah. I mean, 24 hours is a long time yeah, for a day. Yeah. Like I notice a lot of people be. A lot of people be overwhelmed because they'll try to read this whole book. It's a big book, you feel me? But once they say, you know what, I'm going to do a chapter a week. And that becomes habitual, just reading a chapter every week. By the time you know it, you be done read the book. Yeah. Break it down in increments, you can, you can get to where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to learn, you feel me, like, from experience. Yeah. Thinking six months down the road, I'm going to catch a headache. I'm going to just do these 24 hours, excel, do it the next day, keep doing it. Eventually, we'll get to God willing. <laughs> you feel All me? faith to him, most high. Teen Titan. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear about some of your favorite TV shows. Hiya. SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. Who lives in the pineapple one of the sea? <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. Shoot, favorite TV shows. Right now, I'm currently submerged in BMF. Yes. <laughs> PTV. <laughs> um. All the powers, Tyreek, Kanan, uh, Tommy, yeah. and who it was? Ghost? Ghost was my favorite. Now Tyreek's my favorite. I'm waiting on that one. Mm -hmm. um, the Shy. You feel me? Uh, yeah, they did cut up. Uh, they're going to make it part one and part two for the... the Tariq's book for Ghost Power. I think, I think so. I'm waiting on that. Yeah. It's coming back on in June. This year? Yeah. Um, what else I'll be watching? All American, All American Homecoming. As you get deeper into the season, I ain't gonna lie, it kind of slows down and get, you feel me, a little quote unquote boring. Wow. But I don't need that much. I don't need excitement, boom, boom, yeah, boom, all the time. You feel me? <laughs> I don't need that all the time, bro. Like, I could just vibe, like, and watch a, a show that's, you feel me? Yeah. A show that's, like, kind of not hasty. You feel me? I just got into this new show. This is more of my nerd side, Young Sheldon. Nah, what's that? 
Young Sheldon, this, this kid genius who's also ostracized from being like extremely smart, you feel me? And he's one of <laughs> he's one of those kids where you would think that he's disrespectful, <laughs> but that's not that's not the case. Like he'll he'll have the teacher in class, you know, say something incorrect. He'll raise his hand. The teacher will be annoyed, like what? And he'll be like, "I don't want to embarrass you." <laughs> So I'm going to give you a chance to think about what you said. <laughs> Yo, I love that kid. I love that show. Young Sheldon. Um, Martin, Fresh Prince. You know what I'm okay, take it back then. Some shows I slept on, I got to play catch up. Uh, Live a single, A Different World, oh, oh, Cosby Trump Show. <laughs> I gotta take it older. Uh, good times. I seen, what you gotta catch up on that? Yeah, I watched some episodes, oh. but I gotta. I like to watch my shows in order. Oh, so that two two seven, you feel me? Take it older. Uh, I watched some episodes of Sanford and Son. Okay, but I want to watch it in order. You feel me? <laughs> um, Drake and Josh. You feel Talk me? to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Sweet Life with Zach and Cody. Sweet Life on Deck. Sweet Life on Deck. I want to watch the Naked Brothers Band, but I can't find it nowhere. That's a classic. Yeah. I slept on it. Wow. It's, a lot, it's a lot of shows I slept on. I got to play catch up. I like cartoons. Code Name Kids Next Door. SpongeBob. <laughs> Teen Titans. <laughs> Teen <laughs> Titans. That's an oval. Bro, that was me and my cousins. Those the superheroes that me and my cousins was, bro. Motivate? Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Motivate. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ed, Ed and Eddie. Yeah. Those Them boys was drug dealers. You know that, right? Ed and Eddie. They were hood drugs. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. They were selling jawbreakers. <laughs> Illegal jawbreakers. <laughs> jawbreakers. <laughs> hey, bro, that's probably where we got our, you feel me, our chip candy thing from. Man. Not even knowing it. That boy. Subconsciously. <laughs> yeah. That nigga Ralph. Yeah, bro. That boy. <laughs> and the whoops. Yeah. The canker sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Danny Phantom, thank you. I appreciate you. Danny Phantom, Avatar The Last Airbender. Classic. Fabby. Um a lot of people don't remember this show. El Tigre? El Tigre! What you mean? Let's <laughs> talk <laughs> five. What? <laughs> you five. Bruh. I was trying to be all these characters when I was a jit, bruh. Like I wanted my mama to buy me the belt so I can do that. What? I just remembered the replacements. Shallon Showdown. Oh, okay. Shallon Showdown. Whoa. That was me and um, our three show. For real? Our show was Shallon Showdown. Um, Benton. Yeah. Benton. That boy played a role. Like, I ain't going to lie. What kids watch really play a role in their upbringing. Because I remember one episode, he said, pick C for every answer and you pass. Like, it's multiple choice. Yeah. And. Oh, my God. <laughs> in the eighth grade. I sucked at science. Pause. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, daddy. Dang, man. <laughs> Bruh. Oh, I daddy. didn't. I didn't excel in science. For a couple tests. I didn't excel in most of the academics. But science. Yeah. Great. You, could, you couldn't pay me to get right. So it was multiple choice. I put a C for every answer. We all failed, but I got the highest score. <laughs> From what the teacher said. That's how you know the public school curriculum was flawed. Yeah. That is crazy. Well, yeah, them my shows, some of them. 
Oh, Wu Tang American Saga. Who? I would have been remiss if I um didn't say that. What's your Wu Tang American Saga? Wu Tang American Saga. What's that dude's name? Oh, you still talking about cartoons? No, 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 no. Oh, then, yeah, yeah, okay. Wu-Tang. Nah, yeah, man. I know what you're talking about. What was about. that dude's name? I don't really remember. The one that made hella beats. Dang. Dang. Call me on the, on the whim. I really forgot this dude's name. Ra. Ra. Uh, I forgot, bro. But, yeah, that show. I'm going to put you on PZ later. You yeah. probably know it, but, yeah. I probably do, but not, like, in order. Like the way it's supposed to be watched, so I can understand. Probably just seen bits and pieces of it. Yeah. So yeah, like, that was my shows, dog. Let me see Chowder, uh, Flapjack. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah, that laugh was so stupid. <laughs> Puka loves Garu. You don't know Puka? That was on like Disney XD. I used to watch Disney XD, but some shows I slept. I ain't gonna lie, I slept. Oh, Jake Long, American Dragon. You know that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dragon up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ski. Let me see. Let me take it back. Johnny Bravo. Oh, yeah. Dexter's Laboratory. Who, who? Yup. You know yep. that's my cover art for my mixtape. Yep. Yeah. Dexter's Laboratory. That's mandatory. Did you get out of my room? <laughs> 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 it is a fur. It's like the same thing. No it's crazy. Mom! <laughs> it's a fur making the time. <laughs> Yo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perry the platypus. <laughs> Wait, it's just a platypus. Perry! <laughs> Um, Perry. Dang, speaking of Perry, HD Perry. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That was why. So Wu Pei commented on my status talking about it. Them was the days. Yeah. I'm like, yo. Uh, Not for me. We need a reunion. Wait, no? Perry? Yeah. HD? Hell no. Nah. I mean, I I had I mean it was okay because I don't know. I just Looking back, if it was back during that time, I would have never felt the way I feel now, though. I be, I be thinking, I ain't gonna lie, I be thinking, cause keep in mind that Perry, I was Michael. What? Yeah. Michael was the goo. If I could go to Perry as Martha, I'll have my way, bro. I feel like any of the schools, but this how this went. I'm thinking, it, it wasn't me. It's the school, yeah. So sixth grade I was there, seventh grade I was there. I ain't gonna lie, sixth grade, I had Kayla in I think some classes, you feel me? And we had PE together. Yo, you and me, we had PE together. Yeah. When I was in seventh, you was in sixth. But yeah. when I was in sixth, bro, nigga had Kayla and I think a couple classes, I think. At least one for sure, though. The one that bruh. died? Huh? The one that died? Yeah. R.I.P. Rest in peace to Kayla, bro. She was so beautiful. Bro, she had niggas in the PAL Center. <laughs> <laughs> in the school, but the PAL Center, she had a, we had a the nigga. Youth, the Youth Enrichment Center? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so got to get it to him. Bro, Police Athletic League. We had a nigga going to her deliver, uh, to deliver her the messages that we wanted to say to her. Well, y'all was lined up. We wasn't lined up. We was all here. We had some nigga here with us. She was over there. Hey, yo, tell her I said this, and he'll go to her and say it. And he'll come back with what she said and what she was telling everybody. She came back to all of us with step your game up, step your game up. Through the dude, that's what the dude was saying. Yeah. <laughs> Silly me. I tried my luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I had a locks. I have the locks. I wasn't working out. So it was a big head and a little body. <laughs> I was a bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> that boy came back and said, she said, you got a big head and step your game <laughs> Dog. That is criminal. Okay, but now I look back, bro. I ain't gonna say ain't too much change, but I found myself like, this is me, you feel me? In my essence, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is how I vibe. I'm a spiritual, conscious, goofy, introverted, Hood nerd, feel me? And I feel like I could have my way if I was to go back like yeah. this. But I transferred. Sixth grade was buzz, seventh grade was buzz at Perry. I told my mom I wanted to transfer to Somerset with my cousins, bro. Motivate them, you feel me? She transferred me to Midnickel. Dang. Bro, I was so mad, bro. I'm like, you know, you, you still legit. You, I don't want to go to this school. I don't, that I don't was me, to... six or seven. I'm at Perry, <laughs> eighth grade, my running song. I don't know the people. I don't want to go there. <laughs> They're lame. <laughs> I, I was... said I wanted to go to Somerset. Oh, man. I don't want to go to Midnickel. To touch on that, I was fighting every day at Perry. Yeah. yeah. Lunch is time in the bathroom. We slap off in the morning after school, getting in little squabbles and whatnot. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I would be courageous. Other times, not so much. That's why I'm like, dang, bro. Boys need men during their upbringing, dog. I was under my mama. And I said I played a part because you fed me. My old boy was picking me up every weekend or every other weekend, but now I understand him. Before, that was just the mean house. <laughs> you feel me? Like, the only time I'll really try to go over there is if my mama pissed me off. I want to go to my dad's house. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? And, yeah. bruh. Outside of that, bro, I really didn't want to go because, like, my daddy's side, being with my old boy coming up, I was chiefly focused on not doing anything to get disciplined, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. My mama's side, I felt more free. Yeah, definitely. To the point where I remember being a kid. And I tried to get my mom to do it for me. <laughs> I made sure I wasn't in his presence when asking this. <laughs> she said, you're the one that um, wants this. You have to ask him. You have to ask him. I said, I called my dad. I said, dad, <laughs> I don't want to come to your house no more. <laughs> That man said, you coming to my house. You coming to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying. <laughs> well, you probably thought your mama brainwashed you or whatever. Man, no. Nah, it was me, bro. It was me. It was you? It was me. But now as a grown man, I realized, boy, I played. Wow. I needed that structure. And I should have let him in on certain things. You feel me? I wasn't the type to confide in my parents and stuff like that, you feel me? Like, But now, bro, it's like, yeah, I play the role too. I can't act like I'm behind on the eight ball because I tried to be over there and I still ended up behind. I was staying the way I had multiple chances to stay with my old boy. I was saying no. Wow. Me. What about his house that didn't provide you with like an adequate experience you felt at that time? 
Um, I felt like, now my mom, she'll discipline me too. <laughs> but I felt more comfortable like talking to her and I felt like I could make, for lack of better terms, more mistakes. Mm -hmm. You feel me? My old boy, I felt like, yo, I breathed the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you breathe. <laughs> you <feel me? laughs> bro, I didn't want to be over there, bro. <laughs> I'm like, bro, no. <laughs> but now, bro, I'll admit, man, I should have just took that tough love. And then it's like people give you what they know. Yeah. You feel me? You can't, you can't fully blame somebody if like this is what they know you feel me if i give you advice but i'm a blunt individual but you like you like your ears tickled you know what i'm saying like you're gonna feel away when i give you the advice that you need to hear but you're not gonna like the delivery so you're gonna look at me a certain way, you feel me? Now it's like I know how to, I've been around my old boy long enough, I know how to move, what to do, what not to do, you feel me? And I know like, it's structure, you know what I'm saying? But jet days, yeah, that's the mean house. <laughs> <laughs> but look at me now, I'm behind. Wow. I'm playing catch up, you feel me? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we went all the way in on this one. Like, how you feel? The first interview? Yep. Five in. <laughs> Can I give him that broken man? Or we still got more itinerary? Go ahead. Get doing what you want. But uh, shout out your Instagram, where they can find you and stuff of that nature. M as in macaroni, A as in apple, T as in turtle, O as in octopus, M as in macaroni, I as in igloo, R as in raccoon, R as in raccoon, Y as in yo-yo, 954 is my Instagram. Yeah, but I'm not a rapper. <laughs> but I'm still going to continue to make music, so hiya. Hi, All right. Um, yeah, explain to me what you, what you want to convey right now. You said broken men, right? Yeah. So I have this thing called Miri Mix. My music name is Mato Miri. Mm -hmm. Miri Miramar. <laughs> um, so Miri Mix is basically remix, but... You feel me? I like to call it Miri Mix. I got that from my dog, Deuce. Deuce. Shout out, Deuce. Deuce got the juice. You feel me? Your producer, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll just take one of the industry beats and motto that bit, you know what I'm saying? With my own little... Remix? Yeah, my own little swag. So which song is this that you remix? Broken Men, Miri Mix. It's on SoundCloud. By who? Who's the or uh, originator? Kevin Gates. Okay. Luca Brasi. <laughs> 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 Yo, he's fire. I identify with him. Yeah. To an extent. Yeah, he's spiritual. Yeah. Like, he's very conscious. Spiritual. Tap with his roots. Like, yeah. Yeah. He's very down to earth. Like, yeah. Gangster. I'm not a gangster, but that moderate hood. <laughs> Gangsta for God. Huh? Gangsta for God. Yeah. Like hood. Soldier. Hood nerd. You feel me? I identify with him a little bit. But no, that broken man, boy, that, that bit crazy. All right. Six years later, same city. 
Time for me to go. Contemplated quitting music about a couple days ago. And it ain't about the fact the songs I dropped don't seem to blow. What's the reason? I don't know. Boys need men while they grow. I remember growing up, I was really raised by women. And I noticed I ain't stay with daddy, so some traits is missing. I be trying to play on catch up because I want to teach my children. I don't think I'll be equipped to have a family. Ain't no urine, but I'm pissed off. More so depressed. Had a nigga in my crib, but he ain't teach me poke my chest. He ain't teach me niggas play my tizzy, use my right and left. Me and Dom grew up together. She ain't treat me right. I left. Warning comes before destruction. I was playing around with death. I still pray for her deliverance, but I have nothing left. Need a ref. Why you do me foul? We ain't shut a trampoline together. We ain't shut a TV TV screen screen together. together. Now it's like whatever. I kept looking for the one. In return, they see me in third. Situations made me numb and convert to being reserved. I've been getting out my shell. Turn Turn off, dimes who yell. Whoop growing, I could tell. How you doing? Oh, well. Oh, well. I got whoops, but I'm more comfortable confiding in my niggas. It be hurting when I find out that my niggas ain't my niggas. We both know that she attractive. You the reason I ain't hit her. But not touching her because of you, that shit is out the the window. window. I'm still on retention. Ask Kenneth about a pension. We was broke, smoking dope, writing raps in detention. Now I'm trying to run it up. Show my parents I'm not a failure. Help my niggas or illegitimate products, they'll sell you. Inevitable. Cross the line, they nail you. Follow Yeshua Hamashiach. Trying to balance my spiritual side with surviving. Lucifer and Yahuwah been on my block steady sliding and spinning. spinning. I feel like I ain't losing, but I I feel feel like like I I ain't winning. winning. Sometimes my face is looking like a mug. Sometimes I'm grinning. Grinning. In the moment, want to grease some of my whoops. Agenda Agenda hitting. hitting. Certain thoughts I can't control, but I'm controlling how I'm living. Andrew Tate, Steph is cold. Jonathan Dupaton, my niggas. They tell me reciprocate whatever women give a nigga. Now I jumped into my arms like I'm the man. I bought her dinner. Other whoop act like I'm bland. So understand, I got an ego. I got an ego. Bloody muddy, hold your head. Wish you would have saved your bread. Take my parents out of town or throw them racks before they dead. So I'm kind of in a rush. It be hard to have a crush. Bloody muddy, Bubba, Ashton, Victor feel like it's just us. I be staying out the way because I know Woodoo Woo going to bust. 15 months, they say I'm strong. That 20%, I'm fighting lust. Aaron, Cam, Motivate, Darius, let's run it up. People scared to say they broke. I'll let them know. I'm broke Broke as club. Chasing chicken like a club. Park Melissa bought me clothes. DD Danny bought me groceries. I hold that in my heart even though we busy. Belly, don't speak. Don't ask if I'm okay. Just listen to my music closely. And you You could get get to know know me. A lot of people phony. phony. Tell Deuce I hold you down. You do the same so you don't owe me. Don't hug me for two seconds. I need Thank healing. <laughs> don't hug me for two seconds. I need healing. Try to hold me. If you ain't cry while writing raps, you ain't let your soul speak. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it's been comedy these two hours, but fortunately we gotta wrap it up. It's been two hours? It's been two hours, my boy. But that was 20 minutes. <laughs> that was 20 minutes, you lying. Hey, man. But I appreciate everybody for tuning in. The Buzz on A Block. Shout out Miami Community Radio. Hiya. Hiya. You talking about I'm messing it up. You was messing it up a little <laughs> bit. Talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sersky. Yeah.